Senator Chuck Grassley. Sir, thanks for joining us on this very busy, very important Saturday. We appreciate it. Um, lots of activity uh, over there on Capitol Hill this weekend. I had an old boss who used to say to me, don't confuse activity for output. So my question to you, sir, is does any of the speechifying and the meetings going on this weekend impact the outcome, the end goal for Monday? No, it'll be 5149, 52 to 48, and we know that right now. And it would be a good thing if Senator Schumer would let us vote right now and then use the rest of Saturday, Sunday, and Monday uh, to talk about uh, the COVID led legislation that they uh, won't let us bring up uh, as a vote earlier this week. I think it's a great week that we're having, a great weekend we're having in the sense of uh, getting the third uh, uh, Supreme Court justice under uh, President Trump. President Trump promised that the type of people he's going to put on the Supreme Court, and this is the third one of that type, what you might call a strict constructionist, as opposed to what Democrats normally put on uh, justices that like to legislate and uh, and things like that. So it's a great day, and you heard from my colleague, Senator Ernst. Uh, uh, she's here this weekend working on it as well. Uh, and it is an extraordinary session, but to get ninth justice on, it's uh, very important that we do this. So if this goes according to your plan and Amy Coney Barrett gets confirmed or gets pushed through the entire Senate Monday, she will do so along a party line vote, as you yourself mentioned, sir. It's going to be a first in history. We know you and your Republican colleagues would rather take it than leave it. So this is the best you're going to do right now. But do you feel good about that? Do you feel good about the precedent that it sets going forward into the yeah. future to have not a single member of the opposition endorse your candidate? Well, we had the same vote for Kavanaugh, as you know, and I think we had the same vote for Gorsuch. Uh, it's, a, it's a little different if you have a Republican president. If you have a Democrat president like we did with uh, uh, the two Democrats that, uh, like Sotomayor and Kagan that uh, the previous president put on, uh, a lot of Republicans voted for them. But uh, I think uh, Democrats feel a little more comfortable being very, um, very partisan about it as opposed to Republicans because uh, Sotomayor and Kagan got a lot of Republican votes when we had a Democrat president. And even some of those times we had a Democrat Senate. Yeah, fair point. Um, so former VP um, Joe Biden says that if he wins in November, he's going to appoint possibly a special commission to look into adding justices to the bench, what we colloquially refer to as uh, court packing. Uh, what are your thoughts about that? Well, we've had nine justices for 150 years. There's been times that we've had uh, less than nine justices. Uh, and, uh, and I think that, uh, that it's their way, or it'd be Biden's way, of satisfying the Sander, Sander Eastas, uh, you know, the progressive wing of his party, who are demanding this, uh, to put a 10th, 11th, 12th, and 13th member on the Supreme Court, because they, they want a majority that I described as people that are judicial activists, uh, people that want, when there's a, a void in a 50-year-old law, they say, well, the Supreme Court ought to put it in. Well, that's a big difference between uh, Barrett and a lot of uh, people that Democrats put on the Supreme Court, because she said, my job is to interpret law, not to make law. So if there's something that you don't like about the statute, don't come to the Supreme Court to get the void filled in. Uh, right. Let Congress do what Congress is supposed to do legislate that's the checks and balances of government so sir I get your point which is that adding justices would certainly move us in a direction towards potentially politicizing the court if the government majority is free to add uh, justices as they want to going forward it sets a precedent that not a lot of folks are comfortable with but on the other hand Democrats point out nothing in the Constitution that prevents us from doing it and Republicans through the process of um, rushing through Supreme Court justices has brought us to this place where the rules are now, we will do whatever we can, no hold barred. Well, that's where, uh, that's where this election all comes about. 
with uh, Senator Schumer, let's say, putting in $200 million in Iowa to beat Joni Ernst because he wants to take control of the United States Senate, and he says everything is on the table. Packing the Supreme Court is one of the things that are on the table. Also doing away with the 60-vote requirement in the United States Senate so that they can do things in a partisan way. Today, the Senate is the only institution in our uh, political system that forces bipartisanship because 53 Republicans can't get anything done unless, uh, uh, I'm talking about legislation now, not judges, but you can't pass a bill unless you got bipartisan support for it. And if you like uh, bipartisanship, you got to keep the 60 vote requirement in the United States Senate. Senator, thank you for your time, for taking time out on what is a very important day for you and your colleagues on Capitol Hill. We wish you the best and we hope to have you back soon. Chuck thank Grassley. You. Thank you, sir.